Okay, so this revision video is on the complete digestion and absorption of carbohydrates. So this is going to help you revise everything you need to know about how carbohydrates are hydrolyzed in the digestive system and how the monosaccharides, specifically glucose, is absorbed uh, and reaches the bloodstream. So this is the question I want you to, or the task I want you to do. So describe the complete process. So make reference to organs, each organ that's involved, the enzymes that are involved, and then the transport processes involved in the absorption. So you can pause and do that, and then we'll go through the answer. Okay. So let's go through step by step what you should have written. And this is just really a summary for the digestion. Uh, obviously, if this was an essay question, you should be writing in complete sentences. So what you should first have referred to is the salivary glands. This is the first place where digestion takes place of carbohydrates. It's the enzyme salivary amylase. Salivary amylase hydrolyzes the glycosidic bonds in starch to produce maltose, the disaccharide. You should remember that that's a disaccharide of two alpha glucose molecules. That bolusal food, food goes down the esophagus, reaches the stomach. Remember at this point, salivary amylase will be denatured in the low pH of the stomach, which is pH 2 because of hydrochloric acid. That's not really necessary for you to write, but it's just an important point to remember. Other organs that are irrelevant at this point, liver and gallbladder, they're not part of the process of digesting carbohydrates. Next organ we get to is the pancreas, and that is, so you should have said pancreatic amylase is secreted from the pancreas, and it's secreted into the duodenum with the rest of the pancreatic juices. And so again, in the duodenum, starch is hydrolyzed to maltose, or uh, glycosidic bonds are hydrolyzed in starch to maltose by pancreatic amylase. Those digestive products continue and Obviously, they move through the small intestine and they reach the ileum. In the ileum, there are disaccharidases. And remember, these are membrane-bound. Examples can include maltase, lactase, and sucrase. This is where those disaccharides will be hydrolyzed to monosaccharides. And obviously, you should remember what the monosaccharides are that make up maltose lactose and sucrose. Okay, so that's the hydrolysis of polysaccharides to monosaccharides. Now for absorption. So absorption. So as we've reviewed in the case of maltose, but this could be other disaccharides as well, it will be hydrolyzed by maltase, which is embedded in the membrane of the epithelial cell, that'll produce two alpha glucose molecules. So let's go through how they're absorbed. So we've got our glucose molecules, and remember we have sodium ions in the lumen of the ileum. So step one, the bottom left, We've got a higher concentration of sodium ions in the blood than in the cytoplasm of the epithelial cell. So what happens is uh, a sodium potassium pump moves sodium ions against their concentration gradient out of the cell by active transport. So that's active transport, so ATP is used. Sodium ions move out potassium ions move in. So that's step one. 
described here. So now to step two. So by actively moving sodium ions out of the cell into the blood, there's now a lower concentration of sodium ions in the cytoplasm of a cell compared to the lumen of the ileum. So that means sodium ions can diffuse in down their concentration gradient. And they do this through the um, sodium glucose co-transporter. So sodium ions diffuse down their concentration gradient and glucose, move, uh, glucose moves against its concentration gradient. So it's moving from a higher concentration in the lumen of the ileum to a lower concentration in the cytoplasm. And it does this by hitching a ride on that co-transporter. So it moves in with sodium ions against its concentration gradient. And the description of that is here. So we've got our glucose molecules in. They're at a higher concentration now inside the cell. So this is step three. They're at a higher concentration inside the cell than compared to the blood. So they can diffuse down their concentration gradient into the blood. And they do this through a carrier protein. So they diffuse down into the blood by facilitated diffusion. And that's step three. So that's the process of glucose absorption into the blood in the lumen of the ileum.